Minecraft has always been a game of endless possibilities, an infinite world with infinite blocks, crops and animals. But where's the fun in that? This is the Survival Island Challenge, and it's simple. You pick an island and you don't leave. Use the little wood, animals and crops that you could find. But again, that's too easy. I found myself an island that has no wood, no animals, no crops, and I'm going to survive 100 days on it in hardcore mode. If you go on to enjoy the video, please consider liking and commenting, and maybe you could consider subscribing as well, I'd very much appreciate it. Alright then, let's have a nice little review of my island. Over here, you'll see the turtles no bigger this is a uh, jerry frank and hubert and remember that that'll be on the test got some nice sugar cane growing over here some more sugar cane growing over here this one's dylan this one's carl oh look at that there's some there's some more sugar cane growing over there and um yeah i have to survive here luckily i have one item with me one item that's gonna save me the bamboo how in the world is bamboo gonna help what am i gonna do turn it into sticks and eat sticks that'd be a terrible meal so if you haven't been keeping up the track of the new additions to 1.20 one of them is now new bamboo wood four bamboo equals one bamboo plank which means i'll have wood and now we wait. Well, whilst we're waiting, we may as well grab ourselves some sugar cane. Never know what you could do with that. And I'm already down some food. Great. Now, one thing I have noticed across my luscious, beautiful, amazing island is the fact that there's something right there. And I can't tell if that's just a landmass or if it's a sunken ship. Now, the rule is that I'm not allowed to leave the island. So I don't really think I can go over there. Maybe when I have some better equipment, I'll check it out. I made myself a little sand hole just for some shelter. And hey, look at that. The bamboo has grown. This was a this was a terrible mistake. Also, it looks like there's a drown spawner thing just off the shore here. Unfortunately, there's no chest, but at least more bamboo is growing. Yeah. Also, since the drowns were close enough, I decided I was all right to kill them. Slow, very slow, but I got myself some food by the end of it. Only the finest cuisine on this island of uh, rotten flesh. Mm, yeah. And with the night coming, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. I have to survive the night with no tools or food. Now, no matter which way you look about it, my biggest problem going into this challenge was I had no food. The very quick fire way to deal with this is to kill myself some spiders. Apparently, fishing seemed like the best way for me to get some food, and so I need myself some strength. Ow. It would help if the skeletons weren't shooting me or the zombies weren't bugging me. But I was able to get myself two string, which is fantastic. Ah, oh, two string, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, I just said that, whatever. And now we wait for the night. When day two came, an unforeseen problem. Creepers don't despawn. And they also don't know how to die. Re really? How many hits did it take? At least the bamboo is growing. It's just a shame you can't bone meal the bamboo. You could bone meal bamboo? Did not know that. Well, now it's time for me to make myself some bamboo planks. It's not working? Wait, they changed it? Since when, when did they change it? So in all versions of this snapshot, bamboo planks were made by just putting four bamboo together in a crafting table recipe to make one bamboo plank. They have now changed it, so now you need nine bamboo to make a bamboo log, which then turns into two bamboo planks. However, you can only make the new bamboo in a crafting table, so there's no way for me to do that. Plans ruined, game over, end the video? I mean, I just can't get wood, can I? Well, no, I just have to time travel a little bit. By reverting the world back to the original snapshot where the wood was made in the original way, I was able to make myself some bamboo planks and then make myself a crafting table. And after returning back to the latest version, I did a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and would you look at that, a wow. fishing rod. I have food! I mean, it's only raw fish, but no, I'll take it. And now it was a game of fishing and bamboo halving. This will be my life for a while. I also don't have any access to stone at this point, so I can't make a furnace, but I was wondering if you could make a bamboo campfire and it turns out that's not something you can do and just before the night came i decided to harvest as much bamboo as i could before returning back to my little hidey hole this is fun i'm having fun day three and oh look at all that bamboo it's gonna take me a solid minute to get it all and with over a stack obtained i can actually do things like make the basic wooden tools and dig a hole and get some cobble oh this is amazing I even got some coal too didn't totally nearly drown by the way we we move on also confirming no you cannot make a campfire with bamboo wood disappointing i know so we'll have to do with the normal boring furnace way and munch all the cooked fish that'll be better for the diet and with the night returning i don't actually have to sit in a high hole I could actually cave. 
Oh, well, uh, at least I can make myself some stone tools now. Now, digging in the dark is definitely my favorite thing to do at Minecraft, except not at all. I mean, what do you think, Livehaven? But I hate digging in the dark. My first bit of iron, how thrilling. And after all this digging, after all this scare case, you know what I find? A water cave. Yeah, I know. It's kind of incredible on day four that I'm actually fighting back the mobs with a stone sword. I know, shocking. Also, the bamboo is so much easier to get now that I have a sword, but I still do have a food problem. And now I don't. Now, of all the little wood that I have, making doors may seem like a strange choice, but if you're a Minecraft pro like myself, of course, then you know that getting this coal and water is so much easier when you can breathe. I also grab some iron dough, and cooking away we go. All in a day's work, and the fish tastes good. God, it tastes great. Also, I can set myself up some sugar cane. I don't know why, I just did. Nice. After upgrading to iron tools on day five, I began to make some more bamboo doors and headed back underground. Honestly, the water cave wasn't too bad to deal with. Luckily, the doors made it super easy for me to get all the iron that I could. Took me a while to find a non-water cave, and when I did, it was a geode where there was some skeletons and an enderman that I just looked at. Cool, great. Not an issue. No, no issues at all. More zombie noises led me to more caves on day six. It was, of course, more water caves. At least I was able to find myself some diamonds, but diamond, should I say. To be fair, over the day I was able to find myself a few more diamonds, though with no coal, I knew my time was mostly up. I had seven diamonds by the end of the day, though, and when I got up on day seven, it was raining. My no coal situation was starting to become a bit of a problem due to not being able to cook some iron, so I headed back to the nearby water ravine and grabbed as much as I could. On the way back up to the island as well, I noticed that there was another sunken ship right next to the island, and this sunken ship had carrots, which means I could have had carrots and wood from the start. Are you serious? Well, I quickly headed underground to quickly grab some dirt. I got myself a stack, which will either do. And with these carrots and a bit of bone mealing, I actually had food. Wow. I also made myself a full set of iron armor, except the boots. Now they start, they styling. And now I want a home, so I started the basics of making myself a house. What do I material to make this house out of? Oh, I'm, I'm doing bamboo. Who, who'd have guessed? Now the next issue to deal with is I need to get myself a bed. And there's only really one way to do that, and that's to return back to the spider hunt. If only they drop string. Come on now. Okay, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Um, yeah, I just said that. I was definitely being overrun by the end of the night, running out of food too. So on day eight, after doing some minor housework, I realized that the only food that I have was this rotten flesh, but I did have some bows, so that was another easy fix for the food. Then it was back to the house. Listen, I ain't saying it's a masterpiece or anything. I mean, if you've seen my other videos, but like my dad said the first time he saw me, eh, he'll do. Eater got to top it off with a bed. The lanterns, a bit unnecessary. Necessary, I know. For the first time in this world, I was able to sleep in my own home. Legendary, I know. We're only on day nine, and I'm gonna need to survive 100 days in this world, and obviously that's gonna require a lot more food, and so I decided to expand the carrot farm. Also grab myself some more bamboo, and though I was planning to go caving because it was thundering, I was able to skip the day, and I'm not gonna complain about that. I had another cheeky idea on day 10. I would love to get myself a turtle hat, so let's go get some grass and breed some turts. Didn't take me long to get two batches of eggs laid and now I just got to wait for them to hatch. After that, I expanded the bamboo farm a little bit and I also tried to set up something that would make bamboo collection a little bit easier. Obviously, I don't know if this will help, but we shall see. And it was back into the caves on day 11. Oh, there's a witch. Oh, bugger. Love being on Harbour Heart, you know? the feel It feels great being on Harbour Heart. Also, I found myself some more water caves. It's gonna be a great day soon where I no longer have to search water caves, kind of getting fed up of them. But after most of the day had passed, I had finally found found myself a lava pool, and I grabbed myself 10 pieces of obsidian. Now, usually I grab myself 14 pieces of obsidian, 10 for the nether portal, and 4 for the enchant table, but there's no point in me getting the extra 4 at this point, because at this point in time, it's basically impossible for me to get leather. Mm. Now, technically, I could get some from potentially fishing, but the chances of that are pretty low, and so I decided let's just focus on getting myself into the nether first. After making myself the portal on day 12, I grabbed some snacks and headed into the nether, and this nether's so up. I did my best to make my way through, you know, digging, bridging, looking, but honestly, I was pretty unsuccessful.
guys for this day. At least I can get myself some bone blocks on day 13. Fancy, I know. Now, unfortunately, because I am in the snap shops, Optifine isn't a thing, so it's really hard to see what is around in the fog. Now, that could be many things, including a fortress, so let's head towards it. And once I did get a bit closer, would you look at that? It is a fortress. Found myself some chests, which had some diamonds in. Noise. The blazers were doing some damage, which was less noise. Also, I had killed 10 blazers at this point, and I only got one blaze rod. At least I was getting plenty of never ward and some more diamonds, or else this would just be miserable. At least on day 14, my blaze look had turned around, and I was starting to get plenty of blaze rods. I was also finding all the wither skeletons I could, and boy, were they doing damage. And though it took a while, I finally found myself a blaze spotter. After getting myself a few rods, I actually noticed that my boots had broken. And unfortunately, I didn't have any wood on me, so I couldn't craft any more, which of course is a big, big yikes. It wasn't terrible, but I was definitely taking a lot of damage, though I was still safely able to get myself 16 blade rods, and I knew I was done here. It is time to leave. It turned to day 15 on the way home. I had to deal with some, um, friends, and boy, did they hurt. Also, they started killing each other, I mean, as you do. And though it did take a second, I was able to get back to my portal and get home. And it's night, so it's time to sleep. I was running a bit low on wood on day 16, and so I set myself up a hopper and tried out my brand new bamboo collector. It was alright. It's not perfect, but let's be honest, it was never going to be. Then I expanded the carrot farm before jumping back into the water ravine because I need a bit more coal. I did alright actually getting some. I only drowned a little bit, which was uh, positive, I guess. Once day 17 came, let me start by saying the carrot farm was doing really, really well. Now, these seven diamonds, I decided to turn into some diamond boots, and I also made myself a second diamond pickaxe. And then, it was back to the nether. Weirdly enough, I was actually looking for brown mushroom. Back to the drawing board. Now, the chances of a zombie villager spawning on this island is very slim, but there is still a chance. And if that does happen, I want to be in the best possible situation to be able to cure him. And that, of course, requires a weakness potion. For those who are living under a rock and don't know, you need a brown mushroom to make yourself a fermented spider eye, which makes yourself a weakness potion. On my travels looking for one, I also found myself a warped forest, which was the last biome I needed to get the advancement hot tourist destination. And look at that, there's some brown mushrooms over there. Anyway, it is time for us to head home. So on day 18, I made myself a fermented spider eye. I was getting some potions brewing. I made some weakness, even turned them into splash. And then I remembered something that some of you have probably already thought about. Wait, how am I going to get apples? Oh, for God. So, how was I going to get apples? It's a good question. Oak and dark oak trees do drop them, but I don't want to explain why that's not a possibility. Uh. Trading is also a possibility, but you know, I have no villagers, and even if I did, I have no emeralds, which of course scratches out uh. traders. Which means the only way I can possibly get an apple is to loot a structure and get an apple from there. Now, most structures I won't mm. be able to access, but one I would be able to access is the stronghold. It is on the very small list of reasons of why I would be be allowed to leave the island to go to the stronghold to kill the dragon. And so the plan is simple. So let's work towards getting towards the stronghold and hope there is a chest in there that actually has an apple. First things first though, let's head back underground quickly to grab myself some more obsidian. And after watching the mobs kill each other, like, again, it was like a royal rumble down here, no jokes, I grabbed myself enough obsidian to make a second nether portal. So on day 19, after the obligatory grabbing the carrots and harvesting the bamboo, I went back to the nether. Now I wasn't interested in killing the dragon just yet, but if I can get myself about five ender pearls, I should be able to find the stronghold with that. It'd just be useful if the enemy decide to actually drop some ender pearls. No pressure at all. Alright, there you go. Piglin, go away. Go, go away, please. Please, go away. Alright, enderman. Okay, that got me to five pearls on day 20, and the sun is setting by the time I got back, the usual. So on day 21, I had a bit of a thought. Leaving my island on a survival island challenge, go to the end to get an apple is probably the weirdest reason I'm ever going to leave this island. So don't gonna do it. I'd also like to mention that I did set myself an extra rule that whilst I was off the island, I purposely didn't grab any extras to make myself easier. For example, I didn't get any trees or saplings or extra seeds to help myself. I purposely just went to the mainland just to find the stronghold. And on day 22, I believe I found it. After entering the stronghold, I found myself a chest when, well, that didn't take long at all. And would you look at that? The portal's right around the corner as well. There's no eyes in here, which, uh, hmm. Now, remember that I grabbed that obsidian. What I did was I set myself up a nether portal in the main room of the stronghold, and now I'm gonna dig a 
path back to my main portal so I have a direct link so it's going to be much quicker for me to get from one side to the other when I need to. It was a lot of digging and placing cobblestone blocks but by the end of the day we got that all done. Day 23 and I don't think I need to tell the brainiacs who's watching this video that you need a golden apple to cure a zombie villager and of course a golden apple requires gold and so I had to head back into the cave because I didn't have any. Oh hey I found some more diamonds sweet. After mining just over 30 gold I headed back up to the surface. It was night again and as I tried to sleep well there was mobs. I had to fight off an army just to be able to sleep for the night and just the usual survival island things I guess. It might have taken 24 days but I also was able to make myself a bow. Took long enough. Also I decided to make myself some golden carrots. Good investment. It's something I've never really done before and then it was back to the fishing because a couple of useful things I potentially could get from fishing like leather. Now I asked for leather these leather boots is not what I was looking for. To be honest with you, the main reason I was fishing was just because I was waiting for the night. Once the night did come, well, there was mobs, but unfortunately there was no zombie villagers. The skeleton hunt was definitely an issue though, but after fighting throughout the night, no zombie villagers spawned. I decided to kill another day on day 25. Let's add a second layer to the house with more bamboo and more glass. Perfect. Sure, we'll, we'll say perfect. And then moving the loot over to the second story of the house. By the time I was done, it was night again. Another night of fighting mobs, blowing up a little, you know, the usual things. But yet again, throughout fighting the entire night, no zombie villagers spawned. So with day 26 here and some more time to kill, I was thinking back about leather again. Now, there is quite a few simple ways to get leather that I didn't think about earlier. But the obvious one is I could just simply trade it with some piglins. So if I can get myself some gold, the piglins have a small chance of giving me leather and so it was back into the nether though I only did have four gold. I just have to deal with this hoglin. Perfect. He's out the way where did, did you see it? The leather that the hoglin dropped. Now, not only did I not see it, I didn't know that hoglins could drop leather, which makes me the biggest fool of 2023. And it's only January. Anyway, after some trades, I got myself some leather. And it is time to leave where? More hoglins? Not a problem. I can just climb these vines where, oh no, this is fine. Everything is fine. And though it took 26 days, it was now time for me to do some enchants. If I had some obsidian or lapis, which I don't, but nah, I could do that tomorrow. And once the night came and Oh my god, this is zombie, this guy's zombie, zombie village is happening. Oh my god, let's curry, baby. Yes, let's go. Oh, he's a nitwit. He's a goddamn nitwit. Are you having a laugh? Well, now what? With that failure out of the way, I got into the caves. I was looking for some lapis where I found not one, not two, but three veins of diamonds. And it was only five, but now we'll take it. Also found myself a spawner where I got myself some beetroot and some melon seeds. After that, I grabbed myself some obsidian. Took me till the next day to actually find myself some lapis lagoogles. I also grabbed myself a little bit of extra gold and I also got myself some diamonds too. Anyway, it was time for me to head home. So on day 29, I need to get myself some more dirt for the melons and beetroot. So after going to mine some, and there was some lapis right here. Since when? How did I miss that? Anyway, the melons were set up. I also planted the beetroots, gross I know, and I got myself an enchant table set up. I used the remainder of my diamonds to make myself a new sword and a new helmet. Now, I do need a little bit more iron because I was running low on that one. Weird to think, 29 days in and I'm low on iron of all things. Hmm. Day 30 came and I found myself a second spawner. Got myself a name tag, which could be useful, you never know. And after more iron mining and more coal mining, honestly, apart from a creeper jump scare, I got a stack of raw iron. Also got myself a couple of extra diamonds too. Day 31 came and I'll be honest, I didn't do a lot on day 31. I was just cooking some things. I also checked the eggs, you know, the turtle eggs that I've been hoping to hatch and they haven't even cracked yet. Not really sure why. And then I went, well, AFK. Yeah. On day 32, I decided to head back to the stronghold for a few things. The never trip, well, it wasn't great, but when I did get there, I quickly found myself a library. The books were pretty good, however, this stronghold, I am going to quickly show you that this is the world's smallest stronghold. There is like three rooms, and sadly, there is no more apples for me, because there is no more chests for me to find. There's no more anything for me to find. The stronghold is pathetic. And so I was doing a little bit of research on day 33. Apples don't spawn in the never, and you all also can't get them from sunken ships. In fact, the last way you could get them is to potentially trade them. But yeah, sadly, that's not a possibility for me in this situation either because I have a goddamn nitwit. Now, in theory, I could find myself a second stronghold and do that one, but I just feel like that would be kind of pushing the rules a little bit. The rules were that I wasn't allowed to leave the island with very few exceptions and finding a second stronghold feels a bit cheaty to me. So sadly, I don't think there is any way for me to get any extra apples. Some good news though, thanks to the book, 
hooks and the combining, I was able to make myself an efficiency 4 diamond pickaxe. Plus, I have a level 30 enchant table set up. I don't have the levels, but we can work on that soon. And when I say soon, I mean literally the next day, because on day 34, I ran back into Never to get myself some levels. Quartz is a very easy fix for lack of levels in this world. No, I'm really sure exactly when this happened, but between days 35 and 36, I got myself up to 30 levels. And it was by day 37 that I got myself 33 levels, which will be enough for two good enchants. All right, we were enchanted on day 38, where the pick... Honestly, it's all right, but I really would have liked fortune and the sword. I mean, I'll take the looting, but it could have been better as well. And then I got attacked by a pillager. Man, what a what a crazy battle that was. That was insane. Well, I guess I can now go back into the nether to grab myself some ender pearls and get myself some nether skull. I just call them nether skull. Now, I'm not saying soon, but eventually I do want to fight the ender dragon. And I also want to fight the weather. And so on day 39, I headed back into the nether to see if I can get myself some more pearls and skulls. And the plan was simple. Let's start by getting ourselves some other skulls. On day 40, I got myself my first skull. And then a couple days later on day 42, I got skull number two. And then we immediately it took longer than I expected it to. It was day 45 when I obtained my third wither skull. And after that, I headed back to the war forest because I'm going to see about getting myself a stack of ender pearls. By day 46, honestly, this was a lot quicker. The looting was making things really, really simple. I got myself 13 ender pearls and I decided that that was easily enough. And so I returned back home. And of course, it was night. I mean, when it's always now I come back. It's like it's like a trend for me. Day 37 is time to enchant a bow. Come on, Infinity. Come on, Infinity. Let's go. All right, then. Let's redo a diamond pickaxe. Come on, Fortune. Give me some Fortune. Oh, let's go. And now we can cave. We do need to get all the iron, gold, and diamonds that we can find. So we're probably going to spend a couple of days down here. Now, at this point, finding iron and finding gold was really, really easy. I was finding a bunch. But the diamond? Eh. However, on day 48, though, I planned to cave for a while because my pants broke, I decided to change my tactics a little bit. Let's let's do a little bit of strip mining. Now, I'm not even joking. It took exactly two minutes for me to find this diamond vein. And thanks to the fortune, I got myself 17 diamonds. It's the easiest thing I've ever done. Should have done this earlier. Oh, uh, Jesse, we, we need to cook or whatever on, on day 49. Now, that's 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 the Rick and Morty reference, right? Better make myself the rest of the diamond stuff as well. So I do have this book, which I got from the stronghold. So I'm definitely going to put that on one of these bad boys. The other one, I'm just going to do a good enchant as soon as I can get this up to level 30. It is taking an eternity, though. All right, then. What we got? Glass protection, nope. Fire protection, that's even worse. Uh, oh boy, what do we do here then? I, can't, I don't really want to do either. I guess we'll just save up some levels and uh, come back. You don't sleep for one night and all the creepers pop out like they own the place. All right, come on, protection four. You know what, I'll take it, I'll take that. Because with this bad boy, that is protection free chest plate, with a protection free leggings, projectile protection two boost, which is not grey, and a protection one helmet. But, we can actually start taking hits now without having to die every two seconds. That sounds nice. With all the iron and gold cooked up, things were looking good. Great, in fact. It was on day 51 where I decided to spice up the island a little bit. Making the enchant setup look a little bit more better. Making it have more than just bookshelves, I really feel like, added to the island. And then I added some paths. Now, there's probably some people in the comments asking why I'm using deep slate cobble. And the better question to ask is, why, why are you asking? It's my island. And then on day 52, I decided it's now time for me to take on the dragon. So I headed back in to never to do this. Also, I want to point out something interesting that happened. I don't know if this was a glitch or not, but basically, you you can clearly see that my shield is down, but it's like deflecting stuff as if it was up. I don't know if this was a 1.20 thing or a known thing. I don't know how I did it, but uh, yeah, this was just a thing that was happening in the nether. Anyway, into the end I go. The fight went mostly well. Hitting the crystals was something I'm getting really, really good at. If you ignore the cage ones. Okay, let's definitely ignore the cage ones. And once they were all gone, the dragon was giving me very little issue. It was honestly a very well-performed dragon fight. And after leaving the end, the sun hadn't even set yet. So in less than 10 minutes, I got to the end and killed the dragon, which was pretty good. On day 53, I made a little monument towards the end of dragon, and it, it looks all right. I mean, it's nothing special. After that, I decided to re-enchant my boots and helmet. That cost me most of my levels. Isn't that fun? I also redid my sword. Hey, this was pretty good. This isn't the best gear I've ever had, but I'll take it on a survival island. And once day 54 came, I made the decision that I'm going to go explore the outer end ridges. So, into the end I went, and it was through the gateway to explore the end. Day 55 came, and 
I'll be honest, it is kind of hard to give daily updates when you're searching these kind of things. I mean, everything in the end looks exactly the same. All I'm really doing is killing some Endermen and pearling around just looking for an end city. But here I am on day 56 doing exactly the same. A little bit of a side note is that these Golden Crowers are fantastic and I should make them more often when I can. And I was still looking at day 57. We was about an hour in at this point where... Oh, wait, there you go. There's one. To be honest, I'm not really bothered about the elytra. It was more the shulkers that I thought was going to be useful. I have to float in around and murdering shulkers in the coolest way possible. I even got some decent stuff in the chest. But after heading over to the end ship, of course, I grabbed the loon in there. And it was now time for me to head home. Can't go without the dragon head, of course. I mean, of course, I'm never going to leave the dragon head. Also, just because I can, I'm going to cheat the floating advancement. I mean, it's just, it's just a usual thing I do nowadays. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to do a running back montage. Here we are on day 60 where I got back to the gateway portal and it was through and home we go. Just, you know, ignore the falling. Using the armor that I found on day 61 in the end cities, I decided to combine it with my own armor to improve it a decent amount. I was trying to write some notes about it for this kind of commentary, but unfortunately these farting baby zombies kept booking me, like all up in my grill, you know how it is. Now my next task was pretty simple. I need to get myself some iron and a lot of it because I would like to make myself a full beacon. So it was back into the caves I go. To give you an idea of how much iron I need on day 62, this is roughly how much I need. Everything in the shulker needs to be at least a stack where there is currently a piece of iron, and so I have quite a bit of a ways to go. A little bit of an update on day 63. I got an extra two stacks of iron, which was quite slow. The progress was quite steady, so I really need to pick it up if I possibly can. Also, rip my shield. Didn't even know it was low durability, and uh, I found a giant cave with plenty of iron and even a couple more diamonds for me, so progress very quickly picked up here. In fact, it was it was only the next day on day 66 where I got myself enough iron and it was time to leave. It was thundering when I was up as well, so I took a quick nap. On day 67, I made myself a mini auto cooker. We'll hopefully speed up the process a little bit with all the cooking. I know it doesn't necessarily look that fancy, but you know what? Let me move it outside so it make it look a little bit better. Made its own area. And now that day 68 is here, it's now just about passing a little bit of time. I start by fixing my bow and making some more golden carrots. I did dig out the area where I'm gonna put the beacon in the near future, just the basics to pass the time. And it was on day 69 where I got bored of waiting around and I decided to go into the nether because I'm gonna go and get myself some netherite. Listen, we all know how this goes. You dig down, you mine all the rack and then you just find as much netherite as you can. It took me about 30 minutes on day 70 for me to get myself my first batch of netherite, which is definitely not a good sign. Though I did get a couple more pieces the same day, just to fight the lava to get to it. I got two more veins basically next to each other on day 71, which is always a appreciated. And though I got nothing on day 72, I got myself two more quick fire veins on day 73. Day 74 and I realized there was a little bit of a trend here. When I did find ancient debris, there was only batches. There was like three veins basically next to each other in this case. I mean, see what I mean? There's two more veins right here and both of them are right next to each other. And on day 75, I got the last bit of H debris that I need, which honestly wasn't too bad. It didn't take me too long to get it all. Well, it's time for me to return home. I got back on day 76 and it was now back to the way so that's nice. We're almost done on day 77, so I decided to cook myself a little bit of glass. And I also went to go and grab myself some obsidian. Need it all to obviously make a beacon, and well, you can never be too ahead of the game. On day 78, I was just four blocks short from me completing the beacon. However, because of how quick the auto cooker was, it didn't take me any time at all for me to get those four blocks. And just look at that, the beacon is already done. Let's fill it in with sand, and oh, it looks perfect. You wouldn't even know a beacon's there if you didn't dig it up. And now I can cook the ancient debris. Day 79, I think we can all agree on one thing. It's really satisfying to get yourself full Neverite armor. To think that I started on this island with literally nothing other than one piece of bamboo, and almost 80 days later, I have now got full Neverite armor. I've done all right, I'd say. I think I've done okay. Speaking of bamboo, I should definitely get some more. My wood supply is still quite low, and I also decided to expand the farm a little bit. I've been meaning to do it for a while, to be honest with you. And luckily, I've got plenty of dirt spare, and though it took all day, they are quite farly expanded, so that's going to helping my food supply quite a lot. I just got to get all the crops spawning on day 80. So I started with the carrots, moved on to the melons, and even got myself some beetroots. Ooh, I know, it's gross. But by the end of the day, all the crops were in place and planted. We were good to go. Now on day 81, I would say that I have a wither to fight. And to be safe, I'm going to make myself some health potions. Now I only had tier 1 because I had no glowstone available. It's fine. I'm not going to run into the nether. I should be alright to deal with tier 1. I mean, do you know how many times I fight this little nab? And on day 82, 
I went into the caves to find the wither. Now, to be 100% honest with you, I don't like fighting withers in caves. I think it makes it a bit easier. But I'm not letting you destroy the island. There's not much of it as it is. And so I found a previously unexplored bush caves and the fight was on. It was mostly easy. I didn't struggle that much with this fight. I think the only funny thing to point out is that I killed him with a health potion, which is something I've never done before. And I don't even know you could do it, but... We are done. Back home I go, the beacon was made, and perfect. We had made ourselves a full beacon on the survival island. Day 83 came, and well, now what? I kind of did everything I was planning to do on this island, and so I decided to fix the island up with a couple of creepy blasts that were happening on the island as well. Also, remember my originally hidey hole from the early nights when I just sat in here? Oh, look how far I've come. I can finally fill in this hole with no fear of the night. I also remember that sunken ship that I saw a very long time ago. I feel like enough time has passed for me to be able to go and explore it. First chest froze my game for a little bit. Not really sure why. Give it a second, and oh, hey, for a treasure map. And the other chest had nothing special. Also, this map, for whatever reason, it glitched and it just turned into a normal map somehow. Again, I don't know if this is a 1.20 glitch or whatnot, but yeah, this buried treasure map is now just a map. Though on day 84, it did give me a bit of a cool idea. And now I can make a big map and, you know, look at the entire island and everything around it. Definitely made it too big when I expanded it out a little bit. So I made four small maps and put them all together. The question is, am I going to sacrifice the only four lever I have to make my Myself some item frame. Yes, yes I am. And it's tiny, very tiny, but I kind of like it. On day 85, there is only one more task for me to do. So for those who are new to the channel and you made it this far in the video, first of all, thank you for spending so much time here. I really appreciate it. And second of all, you should know that I'm a really big fan of a certain music disc, but this music disc can only be found in Bastion. So back to the never I go for the last time in this series. The small problem is I'm yet to find a Bastion, and so I'm going to have to explore a little bit. The journey on 86 was pretty basic. Between killing gas and making epic jumps, I was finding absolutely nothing. In fact, on day 87, it was even worse. When the most exciting thing about your day is killing piglins, you know you're not having a good day. And another day of traveling on day 88, it was a fun time. And 89, yet yeah, was more tra Huh? Oh my god, a bastion! It's time for me to head in and, well, there was a little bit of an army in here. Luckily, I'm way too stacked for this to be an issue. And there is a chest at the center of this type of bastion. And in the chest, it has a big step! Woo! I got back home on day 91. It was night. And on day 92, was there a need to put some soul sand on my boots? Probably not at all, but I did it anyway. And then I set myself up a little jukebox area, got some deep slate paths to it. And now, now I was technically done. So, what was I gonna do? I think I'm just gonna re-kill the dragon just to kill the time. At this point, it's just about surviving to day 100. Like I say, I completed all of my tasks, and so back onto the Never on day 93, because I'm gonna go and get myself some gas tiers. Obviously, to respawn the dragon, you need the ender crystals, which require gas tiers, and I got four gas tiers the same day, which was pretty good stuff. And on day 94, I had some spare eyes of ender for when I originally traveled to the end, turned those bad boys into some ender crystal. With day 96, that I moved towards the end portal. Honestly, I probably could have done this all in one day, but I was honestly just trying to kill some time and if this fight after respawning the dragon was very similar to the second one the crystals were easy the cages were come on come on and the dragon was literally on zero hp come on come on oh come on that nah, there you go and on day 97 when i got back now i was really really done had one last little tour of the island just had a look at around at the couple of things that i did also the turtle eggs never hatched i don't know why maybe someone could explain in the comments but when I got to day 100, I freed my nitwit friend, and well, I danced to some pigs there! 